All right, learners, welcome to uh, module 1.2, and this is part two. And now we're looking at our output devices. We're still dealing with hardware. So remember our output devices, this is how an ICT device shows the results of processing. So we're going to follow the same route that we did with our input devices, looking at the uses, advantages, and limitations, but this is now with regards to output devices. So we know what a monitor does the advantages of a, of a monitor or display. Again, we went through this in grade 10 and 11. Um, we've looked at some of the disadvantages or the limitations as well. So let's look at the factors that we take into consideration when buying one. Again, what do you see here? The resolution, right? The resolution is very important. The aspect ratio. Do you want a widescreen? Do you want letterbox, you know, the four by three? Um, what is it you want, right? You, you need to be thinking of those things. Going further, the color depth, the pixel density, the refresh rate, the contrast ratio. Those are all things you need to take into consideration. And again, you need to go back and ask the question, what are you going to be doing with this device? So for gamers, these things become extremely important, especially your refresh, your refresh rate, your contrast ratio, um, and your resolution. So let's look at some of the troubleshooting. So here are a few um, problems that come up. For example, the colors might be faded, too strong. Um, this is where you just adjust the settings. Maybe the image is blocky or stretched, sort of pixelated. So here you need to change the resolution. The image might have a tinted color. Now the minute that happens, that's usually with a VGA connector, then there could be a damaged pin in that connector and you might need to replace the entire one. This is why going with HDMI is a lot better and it avoids that sort of problem. And then if you have no display, well, the monitor might not be receiving power, it might not be plugged in properly, might not be connected, might be faulty, um, any one of those. But these are just some of the typical issues that, that do tend to come up with your monitors and display. Speakers and headphones, again, we know what this is used for, we know the advantages. The sound quality will obviously depend on the quality of the peripheral, and I love those memes where you see um, them saying to you about the kind of sound that comes through when you buy headphones from a particular <laughs> shop, and it just sounds horrid, okay? Um, limitations also include to play loud enough for a group, and the use of speakers can cause distraction or be annoying. Right, especially when people are walking around with these things um, and they're playing, yeah, they're just blaring the music. But anyway, some troubleshooting. If there is no sound from the speakers or headphones, well, you need to see, the, is it plugged into the correct jack, right? Are the speakers powered up? Are they plugged in? Are they switched on? The computer sound settings, have you checked those? Um, the computer might be set to use the wrong sound output device. Folks, this is extremely important because a lot of people don't know how to do any of these things. They, they don't know the basic troubleshooting techniques when it comes to using ICT devices. And this is why CAT is the most valuable subject because you can imagine if somebody wants to set up a presentation, um, somebody wants to you know show something in front of the entire class, they've got no ICT experience, they haven't gone through this, they don't know the troubleshooting techniques, and now something goes wrong. They wouldn't know where to look. Okay, so with our printers, we know that we have our laser and inkjet printers. We know what they are used for. We know the advantages because we already know the difference between the two. Um, and that brings us to our limitations as well. With our laser, not good for, you know, good quality color prints unless we're going for a really expensive color laser printer. Um, the toner, not absorbed by the paper, it can wear off. Uh, whereas our inkjet has a limitation of higher running costs, lower printing speeds, text print quality not as good as that of a laser. So you need to sort of work out what's going to be best for the scenario that you have. Now, as far as troubleshooting is concerned, you have a printer that is unresponsive. Again, check if it's plugged in, check if the power is on, check if it's properly connected to the PC. Maybe on the computer settings, the wrong printer has been selected. Okay. Um, Maybe the, the content is incorrect and doesn't make sense. So it prints what they call garbage uh, coming out on the page. And that could be because the wrong printer driver is installed. Maybe there's poor picture quality. This 
could be because you know you know the end the, the printout ends up being faded maybe it's low on ink maybe you're using the wrong type of paper um, your network printer isn't working well maybe the settings are out maybe it's the wrong computer and i've had this happen many times where paper is stuck in the printer and we need to remove that manually and you need to be careful of this because you can damage components um, when you are doing that so with our printers please remember when it comes to the resolution we talk about dots per inch this is the number of dots of ink the printer can apply to a square inch of paper and there you can see what 100 dpi looks like what 200 dpi looks like and what 300 sorry 400 dpi looks like so the higher that number um, the better and clearer that image is going to be then also uh, monitors tvs digital cameras and scanners use a combination of red green blue or rgb light to produce a variety of colors when all three of these colors are combined white is produced which you can see over there printers however use cyan magenta yellow and black cyan magenta yellow and black in a four color process printing and when all four are combined uh, black is produced making it physically impossible for the printing press to reproduce colors uh, that we see on monitors and here we can see cyan magenta yellow and black right then of course we are going to go over to 3d printing um, we've touched on 3d printing in the grade 11 syllabus already we know it's used to create physical 3d objects um, the advantages include printing out prototypes we can print one of customs we can print tools we can print different designs they are expensive they can be slow, they can be noisy, and they need a lot of control and attention as well. Um, problems can be hard to solve because there are a lot of factors involved. All right, our data projector, we know what the data projector is used for. We know it's lovely because it allows a large group of people to view what's on the screen. But the resolution might not be so great. It might be limited to a particular aspect ratio. The contrast ratios might result in muddier images and the image might not be as bright as those of high quality monitors. So again, you need to decide on the particular scenario. But some troubleshooting um, is really this, you know, similar as your monitors. Um, main, the main one being that the bulb, that bulb that's in there might be blown because it has a certain amount of hours. And there are sometimes special drivers that are needed as well. Then we go into our storage devices. So we've touched on our hard drives before. Again, grade 10 and 11, we know what the hard drive is. We know what the hard drive is used for. We know the advantages of our hard drives. If we are still using the traditional hard drive, hard drive like this, it can be easily damaged. And it is comparatively slow because it operates on a mechanical basis. And obviously it's slow in comparison to some of the newer hard drives that are out there. So with troubleshooting, we might find that the storage might be nearly full. And like your cell phone, you can just delete some things, right? The system might seem slow and unresponsive. You can use your disk defragmentation to rearrange the files on the disk so that scattered parts of the files can be put together. And if the files are corrupt, um you know maybe because you didn't shut down the pc properly um you can use your different checks or your different error checking um as well with that being said we've also got our external hard drive and these really work like a large flash drive they're not as small as the flash drive but they work um the same way and because these things are pulling power from your portable device and i'm just using the portable device as an example they can um, drain the battery power on a laptop we've got our flash drives which work basically exactly the same they are just smaller they are cheaper than our external hard drive um, they are more expensive per gig than the hard drives and they have lower capacities than the newer hard drives um, debatable because you have some big flash drives out there as well and then we have well, some social and ethical considerations um, with regards to using flash drives as well. Okay, then we move on to our solid state drive. Now, solid state drive is completely electronic. 
uh, much faster than the traditional hard drive, no moving parts, much more energy efficient, but also much more expensive than your traditional hard drive. And here you can see a comparison of the two. You see your hard drive, your hard disk drive. There's your disk moving around. There are no moving parts here. So this is just for you to see the inside of the hard drive and the difference between the two. So again, completely electronic alternative to the traditional hard drive. Much faster, no moving parts, more energy efficient, more expensive per gig, and SSDs open files about 30% faster than your hard drives. With these SSDs, you also have your M.2 drive, and this you see in a lot of the um, newer laptops, there was uh, there's a lot of them used in the Apple, um, you know, MacBooks as well. This has a different connector and size, and this has a very small form factor. That's why I've put up the measurements over here, and you can see with this connector, this is your M.2 connector. It plugs directly into the motherboard. And I think I have a picture here. There we go, of this hard drive. This is a one terabyte, one terabyte hard drive that's plugging in directly into the motherboard. Okay, so this is just so that you can see the difference between these various hard drives. Then we have our optical media. Um, this is now we were talking about CDs and DVDs, older technology, but just so you know what it is. Um, it's usually used for distributing software. Um, we used to store, and I'm talking about myself now, <laughs> we used to store movies and music on them and they're used for backup purposes a lot of this uh, they are not using this really anymore simply because if you look at the limitations it's slow easily damaged um, you've got a small capacity because it's like 700 megs on a cd and 4.7 to 8.5 gigs for a dvd i mean you have flash drives bigger than that okay not as easy to work with because you need special software in order to write the data onto the CDs and DVDs, and you need a special drive as well. Now, what we're also seeing is that most laptops don't even have these drives in them anymore. Now, they often experience issues because they get dirty, and you can obviously wipe that clean. They can get easily damaged. Once it's scratched, it's almost impossible to repair that. And these discs can be damaged by the heat as well. Okay. Now, there's usually, usually decisions we need to make when it comes to storage. If you are going to be buying any sort of laptop, hard drive, any device like that, and I know most of you, when you when you look at your phones and you want, you want a new phone, two things you look at is the hard drive size and the camera. So when you ask the question, well, what size hard drive do I actually need? Just understand that entry-level drives are sufficient for anyone except people who play computer games. Why? Because the size of the games, I mean, I know with Forza, there was one update that was something like 40 or 50 gigs. Okay. When you edit photos, sound or video, massive file sizes, um, or you have a large media collection, you know, of videos, photos, things, then an entry level computer is not going to work for you. What about an optical drive? Well, might work. You need to ask yourself, do, do I really need one? Well, if you're going to be playing um, DVDs and CDs, then yes. If not, it's not going to be necessary. Do you need to write optical discs? Most of us don't need to because we use flash drives, which are far more effective. And then you need to ask yourself, do you need an SSD? Now, most modern laptops... Um, and computers, desktop computers, even have SSDs in them because speed is the main thing, right? Um, so these are questions you need to ask yourself when it comes to buying your computing device, um, when you look at your phone, when you look at you know a laptop, anything like that. Guys, knowledge is power, right? It, it helps you to buy the correct item. Then we've got our communication devices, and obviously we've got our cellular modem, and it comes in different formats. We all know that little Wi-Fi router, right? Um, we've usually got a SIM card in there. That's why the cellular modem, but I can access the internet wherever there's reception. Easy to use, small, portable, but the connection can be lost, and this thing can be stolen 
and this thing can be lost as well okay then we've got our adsl and fiber router now our adsl router is one where we connected not only to our internet um, but we connected our landline telephones to that as well um, it's different with our fiber routers it's really just your internet connection uh, most of us don't even have landline telephones anymore the advantages with an ADSL router, you could make and receive phone calls and be connected to the internet at the same time. Doesn't seem like anything major, but if you know the past, if you know your history, you'll know that when computers started out and they started going onto the internet, they used the normal telephone lines. And when, for example, as a teenager, when, when I used the, the internet, then I was using the phone line, which means when people phoned to our home, the phone line was engaged because I was using it. So going onto the internet was like making a telephone call. ADSL comes along and says, no, but you can do both, right? So that was a big step forward. And obviously now we've gone over to fiber, we've gone over to cell phone technology, so um, it doesn't really present an issue anymore. Some of the limitations with ADSL, you needed a landline. Fiber, you need a physical cable connection to an existing fiber network. That's why they've been digging up all over the country, putting in fiber lines, and then there's obviously, obviously this thing, the problem of theft due to copper. Folks, that's it for our module, and I'll see you in the next one.